from 1994's Tiger Bear now and a deluxe reissue for his 25th anniversary that's like a motorway by Saint Etienne uh, Bob and Sarah are with us and um, I should say firstly that because uh, it's important for the whole record uh, folk fans may well have noticed that the plaintiff and beautiful melody Sarah's singing there um, is, um, has been performed by it's Silver Dagger isn't it as, as in John Byers and lots of other people yeah that's right um it's such a sort of pure melody. It's lovely. It, yeah, I know, and it works really well with the kind of, you know, uh, dance thing behind it. So, I mean, that was the album version. Yeah. Uh, which I'm glad, because otherwise I would get confused, you know, um, when I do the show ne- next week. But, um, <laughs> it's got that verse that's got misguided tourists in it. But yes. It sounds a bit like misguided Tories, which I think... <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the album on which you invented Folktronica? <laughs> well, I guess so, Yeah. That's yeah, a bit of a bold thing yeah. to say, but, you know, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But that was kind of the, part of the idea, Bob, wasn't it? I mean, to, to sort of take, and Western Wind's on there as well, and to take, to sort of set folk anew, which you are pretty much ahead of your time in doing, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, it was just what we were listening to at the time, and we were listening to um, a lot of, well, actually, mostly folk rock, I suppose, early 70s folk rock, which yeah. wasn't really traditional melodies, but... Um, well, like Fairport and, and stuff. Yeah, 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 and the trees and uh, yeah. those, those uh, forests, those kinds of bands. Yeah. Um, and we're also listening to um, stuff on Warp and um, uh, sort of Detroit techno, yeah. um, and we just thought we'd put together what we were listening to at the time. Were and you see, listening? See if it worked. Were you listening to any reggae? Because I was listening to this, and there was like the melodica, and sort of it sounded like kind of like Augustus Pablo and dub sort of plates at one point. Um, yeah, well, I think there's there's um, probably more in the first couple of albums. Yeah. we were listening to a lot of, a lot of reggae at the time. Yeah, um, Augustus Pablo stuff and. Um, King Tubby, we were listening to a lot. Yeah. Though, yeah. So that was supposed to be the first single from Tiger Bear. Ended up being the third. Any particular reason why? Um. Uh, yeah, the record company <laughs> wanted it to be, I think. They wanted Poe Movie to be the first single, but we... Yeah. Um, which, which did okay, so, you yeah. know. It's an interesting record for you, at Tiger Bear, isn't it? Because it's your third record, and it kind of comes, really, just before uh, there's a sort of sea change in British pop, doesn't it? Uh, well, yeah, there was... Um, it came out the same around the same time as first Elastica album, I yeah. Think. And uh, new wave of new waves, it was called then. Yeah. And uh, and then obviously Britpop was sort of pretty quickly after quickly that. After so that. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, it, it it felt a bit out of step at the time. Is part of you thinking about putting this this new lovely edition out and performing live? Is part of it sort of to get people to see it again in a in a in a kind of new light? But did you think it did, perhaps didn't get the attention it deserved? No, I don't think it did, really. Yeah. Um, and it's 25 years, so it, it seemed like the right time, you know. Um, it's interesting revisiting it ourselves. Um, you know, I'm quite proud of it. It's, uh, it's quite nice. Yeah, I'm just looking back at some of the old reviews, and I see the brilliant young reviewer for Select magazine gave it four out of five, though. Said it was great. I can hazard the guess as to who he might be, but, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, are you, is it something you're looking forward, then, to sort of doing live, Sarah, and singing these songs again? Did you feel you never got a fair crack of the whip to do them with it the first time around? Yeah, I mean, we've been doing Like a Motorway for quite some yeah, time yeah, and Hug yeah. My Soul and stuff, but the rest of it, I mean, some of it we've never done before live at all. Uh, but we had a big rehearsal with the orchestra the other day, thank goodness, because it was really overwhelming, and I had this sort of out-of-body experience. Really, thought, yeah. Oh, thank God, you know, it's not on stage. That would be <laughs> awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, was it sort of very affecting? Yeah, really, really I affecting. It's yeah. amazing. You're doing, a bit of, you're doing a mini tour with it, with a sort of stripped-back orchestra, aren't you, as well, later in the year? In October, yeah. Uh, we're playing in... Where are we playing? Coventry? We're playing Coventry, yeah. Liverpool, Gateshead and Edinburgh. Thank you. That's, that's <laughs> 16, 17, 18. Sounds lovely. So what's in, the, uh, what's in the, the, the box set, Bob? What do you get? Um, the, the album's remastered as two... Um, 45 RPM discs. I was interested yeah. in this. I got some Brian Eno reissues recently, and they were half half speed yeah. mastering and two 45 RPM 12 uh, inch discs for one album. So what's the thinking there? Is it better half speed mastering, therefore twice the quality or something? Um, I've I've never really understood what half speed mastering no. is, but I mean uh, I, I just know that a 12 inch single always sounds sonically much better than, yeah. a, than an album. So you make so basically make an album on two 12 inch singles. That's it. Yeah, and there's, there's also a bonus disc of um, stuff that was either B-sides or didn't come out at the time. Right. Yeah. Um, and, a, and, a, and a deluxe book with lots of lovely photos. Lovely. <laughs> and, I think the idea is the less, like. the less you cram on it, the, the more you can cr- not cram the grooves, the better it sounds, I think so. It? I yeah. think so, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Much, much I love K-10 albums. It's, uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. With 40 tracks. They used to have 40 <laughs> tracks, those albums, didn't Did they? they? Right. Those K-10 double albums. Right. They used to have, like, 10 tracks on a side, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, 
and it's got an intriguing cover originally. Hasn't it? Which is which is a sort of which is you reworked into a sort of old master, isn't it? I don't know if it's an old master, but it's an old British sort of folk painting, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It was very uncomfortable um, being drawn, <laughs> particularly for Bob. I think you it was horrible. Yeah, I had, to, you, wasn't I had it? to crouch over at a sort of weird angle in this. Uh, well, I wasn't actually in a boat, but I was like, wearing this uh, pretty pretty horrible smelly smock thing. The bloke, the artist, had given me to wear. But um, no, the idea was it was meant to look like a, a kind of an album on Vertigo or Harvest or something. Yes, yes. Um, which didn't really make sense in 1994. No. <laughs> which again probably led to it being a little bit out of step with the times. Yeah, when, yeah, everybody, when, a little bit. when everybody had time. In fact, you'd have been probably nearer to it with the cover of Fox Base Alpha or something, wouldn't you? All kind of mod look and Target t shirts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah that, that would have made more sense. That would have made more sense. <laughs> uh, tell us about Marble Lions. Uh, Marble Lions I wrote with a friend of mine, Mick Bund. Um, a while ago, well, a long time ago, um, and uh, it's quite emotional actually because he died. Sorry, he died a couple of years ago, and oh, uh, sorry. so yeah, it's a little bit uh, emotional. And doing it with the orchestra was amazing. Mm. Um, and we did do it live on t- we did it on TV once, I think. Um, right. But apart from that, it, it doesn't get you know heard anywhere or anything. So it's, it'll be really good to do that. Okay. okay. Well, we'll, hear, we'll maybe talk about the orchestration in a moment. Uh, this is Marble Lines. Lake very much enjoying it and James in North Shields says it takes me back to student days I find Tiger Bay quite moving remember seeing St Etienne at the time supported by Pulp Ah, uh, that tour, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Bapta saw the first ever gig Bapta went to was Björk, supported by St Etienne in 1994. An amazing night. I fell in love with them uh, that night. And Seb is saying, what a great way to start the day with the fabulous St Etienne, but 25 years ago, realising that's making me feel a little old. But <laughs> that is going to sound fantastic, isn't it? Oh, it's amazing. When you hear them, they're you know, so brilliant yeah. and such, such a great feel. It's all that David Whittaker, you know, arrangement. Well, let's talk um, about David Whittaker. a little bit about David Whittaker. He's, yeah. got, he's got form, hasn't he? He had form. He did, he did. He did uh, arrangements for, um, who did he arrange? Uh, Rolling Stones, Marianne Faithful, yeah. Nico, people like that. Lee Hazelwood. He famously, he famously did the arrangement on that Andrew Logue Olden, Logue Olden album that the Verve used, didn't he? The last time sample for Bittersweet Symphony. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a lovely man. He's no longer with us, unfortunately, no. but he was fabulous. I love David. No. Um, and, uh, yeah, so the, um, I think it came out, am I right, I think it came out yesterday, the 25th anniversary issue box set of Tiger Bay. Yeah, I think yeah. it was yesterday. Yeah. You I'm probably s- know more than I do. Well, <laughs> according to my information, according to my information, yeah, it came, yeah, it came out. I'm sure uh, that'll be correct. came out yesterday. <laughs> what did you think when you went back to listen to it, Bob? Did you, did you think, wow, this is our um, uh, sadly ignored masterpiece? I mean, did you th- did, were you surprised by how good you thought it was when you went back to it in detail? Um... Well, yeah, I think like Sarah said, the orchestration, I think, sounds sounds great. Um, yeah. It's, uh, I, at the time, I thought maybe it was a little bit florid, and I think listening back to it, it, it really isn't. Um, um, now, David did a, did a great job on that. Did you just kind of phone him up? <laughs> I, I can't actually remember. I mean, I, th- I must have got in touch with him to interview him or something, because he worked with Serge Gainsbourg. Yeah. And, um, and he, yeah, but he, was, he was great. He was like a... It, it, Personality-wise, he was a bit like Terry Thomas, <laughs> was um, so he's he very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think what it, it's interesting listening to the record again? Because I know we've talked about the sort of some folk roots in it, but what it what it had and what became very unfashionable quite quickly, I guess, was that it's not it's not a grandstanding record, is it? It's a great record, but it isn't kind of brash and all the stuff that was about to come around the corner was all people swaggering and uh, and cocky. And it's not. It's a more it's a more thoughtful record than that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I suppose. I mean, it's, it's not something we were conscious of, but we're not we're not, <laughs> we're not particularly brash and thrusting suppose, <laughs> like, uh, as people, really. Yeah, yeah. So tell us again about these shows. The show, the big show, will be uh, at the Barbican twenty second. Is that? Yeah, that's, that's right, next yeah. Wednesday. Have you done orchestral shows before? Uh, 
Oh, I can't remember. Have Only for um, <laughs> oh, yeah, film soundtracks. Um, yeah. Right, there's been a yeah. film playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that'll be that be big. And then, and then, as we were saying, a, a more sort of scaled down version going on tour, 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th of October. Because the Barbican gig sold out within minutes. You'll know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Ooh, la di da. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. yeah. Um, are, are you working on new stuff as well at the moment? Uh, yeah, we're we're. It's early days, but mm. yeah, we are. Hopefully. Mm. Yeah, hoping to record something next year. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, we're going to play another one of the tunes that you've sort of brought along with you now before we say uh, <laughs> goodbye. From 1986, Felt, Ballad of the Band. I love this, yeah. Um, which, uh, Sarah, you were saying you were shocked to hear your, uh, your son Sam strumming on the guitar the other I day. I know, he's sort of teaching himself to play guitar. And I probably played Primitive Painters, you know, a year ago or six months ago or something like that, because one of my particular favourites. Yeah. Um, and uh, he cottoned on to the name and he just found Ballad of the Band, which <laughs> he plays really well. Wow. Uh, bless him. <laughs> wow. I didn't know you were ever stepping out with Lawrence. You've said this in the uh, notes here. I know. Well, <laughs> well, I, what a terrible... Because I wasn't the gossip <laughs> columnist of pop at the time, isn't it? <laughs> it was a brief, you know. Right. We, we were very good friends afterwards and still are. <laughs> was it Lawrence who didn't let anyone use the bathroom in well, his flat? Was yeah. that, was that, Or is that apocryphal or is that right? You know, it's kind of true. Well, I had to, obviously, because I'd stay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and uh yeah, never had anything to eat. No. Which was, I was always starving when I was there. <laughs> right. I, I remember once he opened a cupboard once in his he did let he, he let me use his loo in his flat in Birmingham in oh, Edgebaston, did he? which was a very nice flat oh, that, in a very that's the flat I used to stay in. Is it? Well that was a very nice flat. And also but when he moved to London, I remember he once opened a cupboard and all it was full of was denim plectrums. <laughs> where you'd not the where you'd normally have tins of beans. He said, Come and have a look in here and I thought, Oh he's gonna have me beans on toast and in fact he said, Yeah, do you want a denim plectrum? And there was about forty thousand of them in this cupboard right <laughs> well anyway if you listen Lawrence hello hello, uh, hello yes, Lawrence. yes yes <laughs> and we're going to uh, yeah Ballad of the Bamba Felt from 1986 so um, well thank you for joining us in this sort of transatlantic <laughs> link up Please, from Oxford pleasure. and Leeds two way family favourites <laughs> one for the younger <laughs> listeners yeah, yeah 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 yeah. that and Jen's last voodoo party oh. all the teenagers are listening now if this doesn't bring the millennials in I don't know what will <laughs> yeah oh, it's lovely to talk to you guys I it hope is. it goes um, well at the barbecue I'm sure it will Thanks. thank yeah. you okay we'll see you all soon bye, bye. See you Bye bye. Irresistible guitar line, that, isn't it? Mm. Andy and Stone Ice says, just switched on the radio, delighted you're playing songs from one of my favourite albums. It's not this, no offence, Lawrence, and talking to the lovely folks, folks who made it. Uh, that was chosen by St Etienne, Ballad of the Man by Felt. They were talking about their album, um, Tiger Bay. Andy says, it can't be 25 years ago, surely. It actually... It isn't. It'd be funny if we said that. It came out in 2016. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mark said, Sublime St Etienne stuff. Uh, Andrew said, Marble Lines is making me cry. 25 years of welling up. And Al in Bannockburn says, Marble Lines is making me cry into my wow. fried egg roll. Oh, that sounds a horrible mixture what, of tears sort of and albumen fried and tears. Oh, yeah. albumen and tears. Albumen and tears. Is that one of your solo albums? Solo albumen? So, yeah, new solo albumen, I don't know. Uh, there you go. That was chosen by um, uh, St Etienne, Ballad of the Man, and Tiger Bay is uh, out now. I've been given a sheet here. It tells me a lot about the stuff that's upcoming on the Six Music during the day. But it's not much point me uh, telling you that, because you're going to be spending the evening watching me at the Epstein Theatre in Liverpool, aren't you? Ah, uh, right, OK. So you can forget that. So anything after Giles Peterson, forget about it. Right. Forget about it. It's either you or Eurovision, isn't it, really? I don't think much, that's not much choice in there, is he? said rather expressing himself rather badly. No. I've, I've failed to get on with the Eurovision thing. I know, you know they were all supposed to enjoy it in a kind of semi-ironic way, but I just find it hateful. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you yeah. Go. I do like the women floating about on poles. I don't know what country they are, but I hope they Well, will. there you go. So, um, what, should we remind people of the chain? I think it would be a good yep. juncture to do that. Paul in Plymouth suggested the last one on the chain, which was throw away your gun by Prince Farai. 
Okay. Uh, we do want oh. your suggestions following on from that to radcliffe.maconey at bbc.co.uk. Prince Farai update. Mm. Best John. Uh, no, that might be best, comma, John. Uh, great to hear Prince Farai on the radio. I once saw him in a sweaty club in Leeds, supporting, of all people, the B-52s. Wow. What a strange evening out, isn't it? Bill, the isn't B-52s it? and Prince Farai. Anyway, we want something that links into Throw Away the Gun by Prince Farai on the chain. Indeed we do. Uh, we'll leave you with white denim. Hugh is next. Uh, first, last, everything from Glenn Matlock on the show tomorrow. Um, uh, have a good day, whatever you're doing. Yep, have a great day. We'll leave you, said, with white denim and small talk. Goodbye. <laughs>